So this is project one. So the first thing I did here, there's just a few import statements at the top from the starter code, but the first thing I did here was add this path variable. And what it does is it tells the program where to pull the, the data for the stocks, like value price information. Because the data 2011 folder contains the S&P 500 data from about 2011 to 2012, while the data folder here contains post-COVID data from about 2019 to 2020 to like about summer 2024. So uh, since it, there's, there wasn't an easy way to merge all those data files together, I just have the two folders separate and you would just use this path folder to, for example, you could just do that to change the folder that you want to get data from, get the uh, stock values from. So for compute port vowels, we have all our stuff here. And so first we just get the commission, market impact factor, and the verbose value. If for And if they're not provided, we just use the defaults as set here. Then we read the order file that we have, either the default order file here or whatever has been provided by uh, elsewhere that used the calling function. And we get that. Uh, sorted by set the date as the index column and then sort that index uh, chronologically so that we do each order uh, in e each of the orders happens in order per day instead of out of order because that can mess up the program then we just save the start date end date and create a data range object with those uh, with that now sorted list then we get a list of all of the symbols in the that we are dealing with in the orders uh, get the stock data, the relevant stock data for those uh, symbols. And then here we create a portfolio. This portfolio will basically contain the day-to-day -day stock uh, portfolio, like the amount of stocks we own and the amount of cash we have on a day-to-day -day basis over the course of the time period that we deal with. So first we just insert columns for each of the symbols that we are dealing with in our order list and then also a cash column that defaults to the starting value of money we gave earlier. Then for each order, if it's we check if it's a buy, or, buy order or sell order. Now, the code here is mostly the same, just, differ, just a few slight differences. First, we get the value of the stock on that given day, of that stock on that day. Then we multiply the value by the number of shares we're either buying or selling to calculate the price. Then we get we uh, either we add the number of shares to the amount we own in the portfolio if we're buying or subtract it if we're selling. And then we calculate the amount of cash that changes. So if we're buying a stock, we subtract the value of the stock plus the market impact factor as well as the commission from our cash reserves. And if we're selling a stock, we'll add the price of the stock. Uh, plus the market impact minus the market impact factor uh, to our cash reserves and also subtract the commission again because it's always a minus. Then once we've done that for every single order in our orders list, then we can start calculating the value of our portfolio. So we check every portfolio, we get every symbol in our list, and then we just check uh, the value so we start with the daily value, which just defaults to the value of the amount of cash we had on a given day. And then we just uh, add the value of the amount of shares we own on a stock times the value of that stock on that given day. And then we calculate that for every single stock in our portfolio. And then we just do that for every single day in our portfolio. And that will give us the total number of stock of that of our cash portfolio of our portfolio value every day over the time period that we dealt with then in our test code function here we uh, just check the args if they're not already provided and then what we do is we compute the portfolio values just by running that and saving that as portfolio values get the start date and end date again because we do need that to create a date range uh, because we can't access it from the other function and then we also get the value of the market data, which here we're using SPY, but you could use other, like the NASDAQ as well, for example. Uh, and then we just calculate the portfolio stats using a function from a previous lab to get the cumulative return uh, 
average daily return, uh, standard deviation of the daily return, and Sharpe ratio. And these other values just have to be created because of how the output of the existing function works, but we don't use them. And then we do the same thing for the market, and then we just store them in the... I just merge them with the uh, existing values here for the um, uh, starter code. So now if you run the program, it'll print out the, all the values for the code as written. And then also, if you uh, plot the function, then it will also run a plotting function. I uh, can compare the portfolio against SPY and then create a plot that you can see. Uh, so, yeah. Sorry, I put it here twice. So if you were to run this, so in since we're running it in main, it defaults to uh, my orders modern, which if we can check in the orders folder, is a little short little uh, set of buy and sell orders in the modern day using post-COVID values from 2023, from June to November for a handful of stocks. So if we run this program, you can see here that we get a date range and then we have the number of trading days which is just the, the number of days between these two and then we can get the sharp ratio of our portfolio as well as uh, the market over that same period the cumulative return for both the standard deviation of the portfolio and the average daily return of the portfolio with the final value of our portfolio at the uh, on the last day based on our value then amount of stocks and cash we had at the time 